Mercedes Allen, who founded the collection, taught weaving at the university from 1927 to 1968, and she bequeathed her collection to the university. She had about 4,000 pieces. The collections continue to grow over the past 50 years. It now has almost 14,000 pieces. She was a weaver herself, and she taught a lot of different types of textiles, and so she really liked the techniques involved in all sorts of textile production, and she really looked for things that she felt were the best examples of whatever the type was. So the best embroidery, the best weaving, um, the best dyeing or printing or whatever, you know, whatever was being done, she wanted it to be a great example of that so she could t show it to her students and say, this is what I want you to emulate. <laughs> There, uh, there was a, um, a woman who worked very closely with Helen Louise Allen when she was alive and after Helen Allen died and bequeathed the collection, this person, Ruth Harris, became the first um, curator of the collection and so she really helped to organize it and kind of figure out how can we use this in the curriculum. Um, broader than just this one person's collection, but sort of where, where are all the places this can fit in. Um, and at that time, our School of Human Ecology, uh, it, it grew out of a um, home economics or domestic science program. Um, and so textiles were really important to that, both in the making and in the using. How do you use these in the home? How do you budget for textiles? How do you use these with your children? Um, and so, yeah, I think they thought about a lot of different parts of the collection where this could be a very um, uh, you know, practical and kind of applied way, you know, so that you're not just teaching theory, you can teach the actual things. Every class has a visit to the collection, usually uh, selected by um, the professor, uh, but you can also just uh, select from the website and then you can have your own visit to the collection and then Sometimes the collection directly inspired us or sometimes indirectly, but uh, if you s you have to see it in person to understand the process of how to make it, um, maybe that doesn't tell you the whole process, but if you don't see it, if you don't, um, for example, like if you um, learn about um, ikat only on the picture, like uh, from pin, Pinterest or Instagram, then you will never understand how it, it is made because you have to see how the fabric is woven and how it could be um, made um, in the whole picture. So we visit to the collections and then um, they let us, because it's a teaching collection, they let us to touch it and, and maybe smell it. <laughs> So we just flip the backside and we just examine it very closely and we feel the weight and we see the sheen of the fabric because silk is different from cotton, it's different from uh, flax. So uh, we just um, understand the physical difference in person from, um, with our senses. That helps us a lot and that um, I think I'm sure that uh, unconsciously inspire us in many different ways. This is what I made in a class and this is uh, one of the Japanese shibori collection and we made a visit to the collection and also um, the professor uh, brought some of her uh, personal collection of shibori fabric and then we just touched it and we just played uh, with many different patterns and then we experimented with different techniques and so yeah so we learn a lot about different um, techniques and we also learn from each other. I do think there's a um trajectory um, uh, and I do think there's also overlap that um, there are a lot of people who want things in their daily life that are products of creativity and art and are kind of you know small reminders of beauty in their life I've done some research on some objects in the collection that are um, block printed hand printed um, just really small scale textiles. There are things like um, napkins and placemats and you know kind of things that you would use every day but the people who made them really thought that 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 was a way to get art affordably into the home. So I think there is an overlap there and I think um, 
you know, people find creativity in all sorts of places and find inspiration in all sorts of places. So um, even when it does have that utilitarian aspect, it can also be artistic. <laughs> Textiles, I think, are, um, they're so much a part of our everyday life. We wear them, we walk on them, we sit on them, we sleep under them, whatever. Um, that sometimes we may not notice them. Um, and one of the great things I think about this collection is it, it gets you to slow down. It gets you to notice the world around you, the beauty in that, and, and also the work that people have put into making these things. Not everything in the collection is handmade, but a lot of it is. Um, and it really gets us to understand those processes. And I think it also teaches us an incredible amount about people around the world. The textile, the textile collection is global in nature, um, and it goes um, historically from early Egyptian Coptic textiles to pretty much last year. Um, so there are points in, you know, that we can just learn so much about not just the objects themselves, but the cultures that produce them.